Okay, we'll make a start. Hopefully everyone can hear me. My name is Matt Crofts. I head up the Simple Fund Simple Invest product teams. Today, we are going to take you through Simple Invest. We'll hope that you can learn a little bit about the product. Feel free to uh, ask. I've got uh, Andrew Pascoe joining me, the Simple Invest product manager. Andrew is going to show us a bit of the planning side. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, Matt. Hi, everyone. So it is just 10.30. We'll make a start. We'll get started with housekeeping. So those that join can just be aware we are recording this. So if you join us a little bit late, uh, we will send you a recording. Attendees will receive an email with a link to the full recording. Any questions uh, during the session? I've got Andrew and Mario, two absolute tax gurus. Um, CPA qualified, uh, can answer any of your questions around the software. Certainly not any tax questions, uh, but certainly- not, questions. not giving any advice here today, are we, Matt? <laughs> yeah, certainly a disclaimer, Andrew. Um, but certainly can answer any questions on the software and direct you to it. So please uh, reach out to those as we go through today's session. We might have some time at the end. It's around about 45 minutes. You've got me and Andrew for, so please make the most of it. So we'll make a start. First question is, what is Simple Invest 360? It really is an integrated double entry general ledger solution. It really does every bit of Australian tax entity types. So companies, trusts, individuals, you can handle partnerships in it as well. And obviously with our Simple Fund solution, already been in the market now for six years. It manages SMSFs with our Simple Fund 360 solution. So it really just complements that really well. Handles all the entity types. Um, for those that are 360 clients that's listening in, I had a quick look at the attendee list. It's probably about 50, 60%. The best thing is it looks like Simple Fund 360, all the same efficiencies. You really don't need to train um, all the machine learning tech the financial reporting flexibility, uh, all that is very, very similar, about 80% similar to our Simple Fund solution. For those that aren't Simple Fund's clients, it's really about automating your investments. That's its really number one purpose, automating your investments with feeds, corporate actions, machine learning, the latest technology, um, we'll go through a bit of some of those features today. If you're a CAS user, it's got integration with our CAS product. So CAS, if you're not aware, is our ASIC corporate compliance solution that manages all your trusteeships, your, your uh, company directorships, uh, your shareholdings. We integrate with that as well. So this is something I think Andrew gets sick of and I probably get a little bit sick of is when it is available. It is available now. Uh, we're very excited to announce we released in June. We've got a few hundred clients running the solution every day. Um, it's fully complete. Um, we've obviously continued to put out releases every three weeks, but it's ready to go. Uh, Ron, the CEO of BGL, some on the call may know Ron. He's a bit of a, a legend around the industry. He's given every client that's a simple fund or a desktop client or a CAS client, five free entities. And when's that run out? How, how long has Ron's generosity last, Andrew? It's just to the end of this month. So you better get in quick. It's been another six days. So uh, there you go. Ron's generosity ends. Uh, he's certainly been enabled. All you have to do is you're a simple fun client. It's so frictionless. We just did one slide. You just click add new entity, which I'll show you how to do. And rather than just add SMSF, you can add trust companies and individuals. If you're a non-BGL client, just reach out to us. We've got an account management team, a website, just go to the BGL Corp website or reach out to us today and we can help you get on board with this solution. But it's certainly available now. This is a bit of the why. Um, 
Andrew and myself really saw this problem in practice. Andrew runs his own family trust. I run my own family trust companies and SMSFs. So we're, we're right on the ball uh, with this problem as well. Uh, but it was really clients telling us, Matt, Andrew, I love Simple Fund 360. It's really revolutionized my SMSF space, but I need something similar that does everything for a trust, for a company. So this was really the, the constant problem. And the reason, you know, about two years ago, we, we made the decision to build this solution because it was just a growing need. Uh, bank feeds are, are great. You can run them in a cash book. You can run them in a GL program. But, you know, if you've got investments, then you need to somehow combine your broker, share trades with your bank feeds. So a lot of people have those separate. I know I had those separate and dreaded year end to try to consolidate, you know, the bank entries and the, the I've got multiple brokers so it made it extra challenging. And I'm sure you've got clients like that as well. Excel, you know, I was constantly using Excel and we know a lot of clients think this is Excel's the best FinTech ever invented, um, which us accountants certainly agree with, but it's also got its faults. It's not really great for doing tax recs or foreign currency translations and try to keeping it all automated. So this was really the disparate software problem. Client accounting was then done in your work paper solution or in you know, your client reporting solution, depending on what accounting solution you use for printing out your financials, your minutes, your notes, all that. Uh, Word was on, obviously used for some of the company compliance. So we've got that integration with CAS, plus you can do minutes directly in the software as well. And then there's the advisor piece. I think this is always emerging and Andrew will cover a little bit of that advisor piece, but uh, we've got a lot of integration on the advisor side with portfolio management. So that was really the problem. Here, we thought we'd show you a bit of a case study. This is Linda. Linda works for Clark Warrenrig, uh, a firm pretty typical of a BGL client, uh, two partner practice, been in business for over 20 years, been using Simple Fund. Linda's a senior accountant. She has previously before Simple Invest, she's a big Simple Invest fan. Um, she was using a basic investment register solution. I won't name it, but it was a little bit old. It used to update with share prices and dividends, you know, the old school way of loading it in manually the old desktop clients will know you know you load a csv file into this old software and you get uh dividend data put into it but she was really an early adopter wasn't she andrew really came on board very early she was one of our first uh, closed beta clients that's right yeah she was very keen to jump on yeah and i guess you can see a couple of her quotes there and the one that really resonated with me is simple invest has so many different options that it's almost impossible not to save time now, as a product manager that really puts a smile on my face because we are we're all about trying to save time and it was great to hear that from linda and i did ask andrew whether you prompted linda and no it was all unprompted so that was even better um these are really not paid a, actors, Matt. <laughs> no, this is a real person. Um, and it was a lot of that, you know, knowledge that she'd grown up with, simple fund, and really wanted to see that come into her trust and company space. So it's a lot of the, the automation we've got in smart matching. We've got some machine learning, which we call AI. It does a lot of the auto categorizing. The corporate actions, which is just you can't get on some of these old investment registers. Um, they really don't show corporate actions built into them. And then the presentation part of it. So that was really, you know, the case study. This will be published up on our website. Uh, there's a few more coming as well. But it was really this that was really the time consuming part, you know, reconstructing CGT history, uh, checking the records are accurate, you know, especially when you've got you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of potential CGT investments. 
we can reconcile directly to registry. As far as I know, we're the only ones that have got the three major registries and cover 98% of the Australian market. So you can do reconstructions a lot quicker. You can do checks against registry a lot quicker. You've got the corporate action module that notifies you of all the different corporate actions that you may have on your investments. Okay, you can really automate a lot of that. As Linda mentioned, it's that consistent financials as well, we know is a problem. Some people that love this, you know, their super accounts and the layout that we've enabled them to be able to create, you know, add logos. We just made a, a big improvement to the logos only last week. Um, so have a look at that again. And, you know, being able to present your trust, your SMSF, your um, company accounts all in one location and also have three providers, both in our SMSF solution and in our Simple Invest solution. You can use DocuSign, Adobe Sign and FuSign. So we integrate and have those ability to digitally sign in both applications. So you can send out one report pack for the whole family group. Accounting work papers. This is only if clients haven't looked at Simple Fund 360 for a while, if they're using one of our competitors, they may not be aware that we have got accounting work papers built directly in the software included in the price. I'll show you a little bit about that. I think it's better if I show you rather than just, I'll do it live. Tax recs, this is a big time saver. All right, when I first looked at BGL many, many years ago, um, I won't give you a date, uh, Andrew will make fun of me, but. I looked at BGL and the time saver was being able to reverse and recreate entries. We've got that same time saver that we put in our desktop solution where you can reverse, calculate the tax, the dividends, all the foreign tax credits, all that time consuming part. Um, and if you make a mistake, you reverse and start again, you know, rather than having to, you know, find errors in your Excel spreadsheet. All right, so what I'd rather do is show you the live software. Always a little bit risky, but I like to live a little bit dangerously. This is Simple Invest. <laughs> I'm making Andrew laugh at least. Uh, he has to laugh because I'm, I'm his boss. <laughs> so when you, first, <laughs> when you first come in to the software, the first thing you'll notice now is if you've set up a trust or a company or an individual, you'll see on our dashboard all those in one location. So I can filter for those and see where all my reporting is up to at any point. So I can hit this filter and just see the SMSFs only. If I wanna just go and see the trusts, I can see where they're up to in their processing time. So what I'm gonna do is just select one of the entities here Sorry, Matt, just to interrupt you, we did have a question. Um, they said when they select Simple Invest in the app switcher, it takes them to Simple Fund 360. So I thought you just should point out that Simple Fund and Simple Invest, they do sit within the same login. And this does allow you, as Matt just showed, to, sh to be able to view SMSFs, trust companies in that entity workflow screen. So you don't need to do anything to activate those five free ones that Ron's already given you until the end of this month. You would just need to go through here, add new entity as Matt's about to do. And then in that drop down, before it would have just had SMSF, now you've got those different entity types. So yeah, I think that's a good question, um, just if anyone needed help getting started. Yeah, it's a good point, Andrew. I think that's where some people aren't realizing that it's available because the default look is that when you come in, you just see your SMSF. So just click this add new entity and away you go. If you happen to be using a really old screen, which we don't really use, it's there as well. Um, so that's all you need to do. And then you'll start seeing the screen, the menu will totally change on the left-hand side. So that's when you're really going into Simple Invest. And a lot of the functions are very similar, but you'll see obviously the, the trust dashboard, the trust details, trust relationships. So we'll just jump into the trust dashboard. And here we upgraded this fairly recently for SMSF, but you know the beauty is it was also updated for trusts as well. So here you can see straight away that I've got some unmatched transactions. I've got some work papers. I haven't completed my work papers for this. Now it's not mandatory use work papers, but 
it's included in the price. Um, and your data feeds, all my data feeds reconcile, which is fantastic. Um, and any client queries, Andrew will show you that a little bit. I've got some quick, I like this because it can show me complexity of what sort of trust I'm dealing with. The more types of investments, generally the more complex it is. And then the more types of beneficiaries, you know, generally it's a bit more complex from tax planning point of view. I've got a company, uh, some people call it a bucket company, a trust distribution company here as well in the beneficiaries. So it's a family trust. You can handle all the different types of trusts. Um, you know, from unit trusts through to testamentary trusts that handles all those. Um, and it also obviously handles company structures as well. I'll just quickly jump into uh, the company I had here. So I can quickly switch into a company, the dashboard changes. And you can see here, this one's a little bit simpler, just some unit listed trusts and some bank accounts. Uh, so jumping back to the discretionary trust, the next thing I wanted to show you was just some of the uh, beneficiary details. So if I go into here, I can basically see the beneficiaries and add new beneficiaries in here. I can also see the trust relationships as well. So this helps populate the various forms, minutes, and uh, other details for the beneficiary screen. So it's very easy. Anyone that hasn't seen, you can just drag and drop into any of these items. It's very simple software to use. All right, jumping back to the trust dashboard. This is getting down to the accounting side. Okay, I'm an accountant by trade. I run a number of different entities. Um, just coming up. And here, one of the things you have to do as an accountant is obviously reconcile the transactions or what we call in simple fund language or simple invest language is being able to basically just match the transaction. This is where we have got a huge edge on the competitors. What we put in a while ago was what we called smart matching. So this is a bank account up the top here. You can swap between your bank accounts and you can see I've got 12 unmatched. The beauty of the system is already a number of them have been automatically matched. It knows what an ASIC fee looks like. So I can just come in here and just select all and just go multiple match. Some I need to review, it's not quite sure about. All right, this one is a tax payable one. So it's stopping me and saying, Matt, you've got to review that. I need to know what sort of tax payment that is. Does it relate to the financial year? Um, or is it a refund under over provision? So those, it needs a little bit more detail here. Normally we can automate dividends. So dividends get automatically coded. I don't need to do anything for those and the franking amount gets put in. But in this case, it's an international dividend, which is a little bit trickier. So this is where the machine learning kicks in and goes, I can read a description like that. You know, don't have to be a rocket scientist to basically know that's an Apple cash dividend. So I'm gonna suggest that to you, Matt. And it's gonna put it into foreign accessible source income. And then I can match that one. Okay, so this just speeds up that tedious process of things uh, you know, like bank transfers, things that uh, can't be automated. It can do all the buys and sells. It can do most of the dividends, but some of the more complex things uh, you need to sort of manually deal with. What I want to show you here was just uploading a bank statement. We know in real life, because we work with the software, you can't always get a bank feed. Now we are pushing to get as many bank feeds as possible. Um, but what I was gonna do here is jump in and upload a, uh, I can find it, this one here, a PDF. Might be an image, might be a PDF. I'll just upload that into the system. And this one's an international one, all right? This is what we know is harder to get, international feeds 
setting up international relationships with international feeds is a bit trickier. So this one is just really like a printout that I've got off Comsec and it's got some transactions in it. And you might be using your software at the moment, trying to get this into Excel or trying to, I don't know how else you'd sort of do it if you didn't have a feed. But this is the way you do it in Simple Invest. You load it, it basically reads, this is machine learning again. It reads the transactions. You see each transaction, it identifies it on the statement, all right, and identifies it here, brings it through. Then I can just switch it. This is US dollars. So it does the foreign currency translation using the reserve bank rates, uh, daily rates, which is totally allowable under the tax act. You can do monthly, why not? Why do monthly when you can do daily automatically? Uh, you bring that in, you create it, and all your transactions come in. You can see it's starting to match some of those already. No, it's just raw bank data. It'll start matching those and you can really bring in those a lot quicker. Anything that's recognized, I can just multiple match. Needs a bit of a check on these two. Um, Tesla, it just wants me to confirm the units. It's actually grabbed the units out of the narration and it just wants me to um, confirm that. Uh, that again is machine learning. Don't see anyone else doing that in the market. It's very right. impressive, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, I'll just keep talking till I get a reaction from you. Um, so that's smart matching, that's bringing in the data. The next thing you normally do on a accounting basis is your corporate actions. All right, so if you're doing this manually in Excel, have a look at this, a lot simpler. We notify, we look at all the investments you've got on. Uh, with this case, I'm just gonna do a DRP. Uh, looks, I think, yeah, there was a share purchase plan here as well. That's optional. It notifies you of that. I'll just do a automatic corporate action here. It just fills in all the data and I just process it. All right, done. I then go through the rest. And the next thing I normally do after that point, after I've completed my corporate actions, I'll either do a registry check so I'll jump into uh, what we call the balance review screen. And this is what I was saying earlier. This is where we link to the registries. I've just given my HIN number. A uh, little bit of real data, a little bit of fake data here, but it's basically put in the HIN number and then it's reconciling. Okay, I've got 500 units of Altium and it's matching. BHP group, I haven't put that HIN number in. All right, so I'd need to go and put the HIN number in and then it would start matching off those. You can just show the variances only. You can also see the registered names, you know, which is good more for an SMSF to make sure you've got holdings. But that's the registry process. The next thing you might ask me is what about depreciation? I've got some rental properties. You know, this is really good, not just for shares. I've shown you a little bit of the share side from an accounting point of view. But you may have property, you may have a mixture of property, shares and other items, crypto in there as well. So I can upload a, uh, a uh, depreciation worksheet that I might have in Excel. So I just select, yeah, I thought it would do that to me. I'll just select this at the moment, but assume that's a property. Let's get rid of this one. Fortune favors the brave, Matt. <laughs> it's always tough doing things live. It is, I uh, got ahead of myself there, but effectively what I wanted to show you was just uh, the import and of a CSV file. So I'd done it earlier. It basically just allows you to run your depreciation schedule in here. And then 
close that, open that, and you can put your low value pools in here as well. You can put your own custom pools in and you can import from CSV uh, format as well and recalculate these. So it handles your depreciation there as well. It'll do the journal entries when I post those and recalculate those and run the depreciation schedules. Generally, after you've done that, you're then getting into either your work papers or you might jump, depending on how you process, you might jump into your end work papers and then do, then, uh, you know, allocate the profit and then do your work papers. All right, so here, what I'm gonna show you is just a little bit, Andrew will show you this a little bit as well. Start the year end process. So I actually think any 360 clients, uh, Simple Fund 360 clients on the call, I think we've actually done a better job than even our Simple Fund side in being able to show this all on screen where you can calculate the taxable income. Okay, so it's generated all the dividend information, the franking credits have come through. I can then adjust some of these items. I see the tax label that I'm adjusting. Um, I can put additional items in. So items that may just be tax only items, might have some water care, tax offsets. If you've got some farming related clients, you can put those in and just put your adjustments in on the fly. That'll come through to your tax rec and obviously go through the tax payable. You can also do some reserving here. All right, export this to Excel. I'll save and paste that. So now it's doing the tax entries for me and it's getting into the distribution of the profit. All right, so we're in a family trust here. So I've got discretion on how I can do that. Obviously you need to check your trust deeds, how much discretion you have got. Um, with streaming, um, you can get your deed updated. But what we've got is this profit to allocate. Now I've got a, a bucket company or a, a trustee company here to distribute to plus two members. If I turn on streaming, it gives me the option to distribute some of that percentage. If I want to distribute the franking credits through to the company, I can distribute all that. That's the percentage and that's the dollar amount. So that streams all the franking amount. And then I can maybe distribute someone that's on a low taxable income, the capital gains. Okay, so I'm streaming that through. It's very visual, very simple to use. And it will then basically auto populate this form, which is populating your minutes, really saves you a heap of time. I know when I was doing this, Previously, I'd have to manually copy it into the minutes. Um, you've got to do your pre 30th of June minutes as well. This really just streamlines a lot of that. You can also integrate into CAS at this point in time. I haven't got time to show you that, but now I'm going to just post the entries. And I'm then up to the work paper screen. Okay, so I can download all these tax recs. I'll just show you quickly the statement of taxable income. All right, there's all that information, including the forestry managed credit that I put the adjustment in. Really helps save a lot of time doing your work papers. You've got your statement of distribution here as well and your tax rec. I know we will get the question, what about the tax return, Andrew? There's already a few questions coming through like that. So if you want to address that uh, elephant in the room, that'd be good. We are working towards a tax solution. We will give you more information, but we'll definitely have, whether we integrate with a third party or whether we do it ourselves, we're definitely working on a solution um, to be able to uh, really give you some efficiency because we know that's the sort of final piece. So stay tuned for that. Um, but we certainly you know, do a lot of the heavy lifting already when you look at the tax rec, it's got all the labels there and we know it's still a bit tedious. It's probably 10, 15 minutes to put this in, and especially if you've got, you know, a big family group, we know that takes a bit of time. So certainly keep, keep your eyes peeled. We update uh, regularly and we are listening.
That's probably about as direct as I can be, hey, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I think that just uh, nailed it, yeah. Okay. All right. So the, the next thing I normally do um, is go to the work paper screen. All right. So this is built in to the software. There's no additional charge. Anything I've shown you is all built in to the software. Okay. This I use a lot because it's where you can put all your documents. All right. If you haven't seen our work paper solution, you've got some estate planning here. You can upload your permanent docs. You can basically attach your ASIC documents here. Um, you can write notes in here. Um, you can basically do reviews, mark things as completed. So you really get much more of a handle on where your jobs are at. You can see when they're up for review. When you upload a document, you know, if you want to put some substantiation on it, it might be a big document. Um, you can upload it directly to that specific, or you can just upload it to the general area. All right. Which just attaches really to the, the control level of the account. All right. So you can just upload anything. Uh, I don't know. What have I got? A bank statement here. Upload and attach. So that's all part of your document pack now. All right. So that's all in one place. You can then export this. We know clients want to sometimes export this whole document pack, including the documents I've attached. You can export just the documents I've attached or export the whole work papers. All right. If I make an adjustment, the thing I love about work papers. If I make a change to it, I can refresh the work papers. All right, so it's got it in a point of time. If I reversed the profit allocation, redid it, and it changed the tax calc, it'll go through the whole work papers and show me whether something's been changed. Here, a rework's required. So it's quite intelligent. It'll rerun the reports as well. So the distribution report, reconciliation reports already added in there. You'll see here, it's alerting me, and which is great as a junior accountant. If I go back many, many years ago, Andrew, when I was a junior accountant, these are some of the things I may not have known. You know, oh, I've got to reconcile what's a distribution tax automation screen. I can click on that and it will show me that I'm not reconciling to this external data. Okay, so that is quite valuable as well. But you, your work papers is really helping you train some of the younger staff and really helping them reduce some of their errors. So that's work papers. You can also notify the preparer or the reviewer from here. So certainly great when you're working from home uh, to treat, keep that communication. Once you know, you've completed the work papers, you can notify your, your boss that the uh, work papers are done and it's ready for review. Auditor, more relating to SMSF, but you, know, you might have some public traded trusts or something that you, you know, can certainly handle that. Um, as well, it's a full double entry system. And before I get it, yes, you can do journals. Major feature, um, you can do journal adjustments. All right, so... I think that was mostly what I wanted to cover today. Um, and also, maybe I'll just show you very quickly, then I'll hand over to Andrew. This is our report screen where you can create the report packs and do your digital signing as well. So in here, you've got your digital signing uh, where you can send these out. It picks up the resolution. I'm using FuSign, but you can use Adobe Sign. The main thing we're saving here is just the markup so that the compilation, the trustee resolution report automatically gets marked up where they've got to sign. And the documents come back into the system, into our document screen as well, once they're signed. So you can store them here and also have them stored in your digital signing solution. So if you use FuSign, the documents will be stored there as well as stored in 360. You know, that's very handy. You've got to keep these documents, the signed ones for 
up to 10 years for trustee minutes and uh, resolutions and five years for some tax documents. So it's great that they're all sort of signed and give you a bit of peace of mind. Andrew, anything from an accounting perspective? I think you've covered off pretty well there, Matt. All right, that's my cue to hand over to Andrew and let him show you some of, let me just jump back into the presentation. Some of the story from a planning point of view. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So this is the second part where we'll give a bit of a plan and case study. Uh, we've got Lantana Private Wealth, where Brett Jackson is the founder and director. Like Linda from Clark and Brown Rig, Lantana was an early closed beta client as well. So Lantana Private Wealth, they're a multidiscipline firm here in Melbourne. Um, they provide clients with what they call a one-stop shop for both tax and financial advice, as well as wealth management services. So after gaining experience at Deloitte and with a series of boutique advisory practices, Brett founded Lantana Private Wealth. Uh, he's a registered financial advisor, tax advisor, SMSF and direct security specialist, and he's responsible manager of the group's AFSL. So Brett was looking for an all-in-one solution, so one which the accountants could use for ATO tax reporting and the financial planners could use to monitor investment performance and provide client-facing performance reports as well. So as an existing Simple Fund 360 client, Brett, like Linda, was already aware of how well BGL handled SMSFs, a robust CGT engine, all the reporting that we do, and he was keen to see this replicated for trusts, companies and individuals. So as you can see, for this reason, Simple Invest 360 was really a perfect fit for him. Just jump to the next slide, Matt. So previously, Lantana would have separate software. Uh, this is like that disparate software problem that Matt spoke about earlier, that a separate software for financial planning and for tax with issues of reconciliation occurring between the two. Uh, but thanks to BGL supporting more than 350 data feeds, Lantana was able to eliminate the duplicated client reporting software and just have all data feeding into one place, which was Simple Invest 360. So all those data feeds that you're already using in Simple Fund 360, uh, they're already available in Simple Invest 360. So our data feeds include all the major wraps and platforms, as well as a huge range of banks and the most brokers covered of any wealth software. In fact, our contract note service will update the units in the software just in a matter of minutes after a trade has been executed. Yeah, it's a good point. It's, mm. uh, we're actually upgraded. It used to be overnight. It's now uh, really within about five minutes of the trade. Yeah, it's amazing. We also have daily price data coming in for ASX and UT, as well as pricing for major foreign exchanges. And we're revaluing all those investments on a daily basis. Thanks, Matt. So as mentioned, a key area for Brett was investment performance reporting for planning purposes, as well as for the client. Now, this is one area that I've really seen uh, BGL build out since I joined about five years ago, is the amount of investment reporting that is available. So under investment dashboards, you can find the simple dates performance. I'm never sure how to pronounce that one, Matt. Is it dates or dates? <laughs> we get both. <laughs> okay. Go with one, whichever feels right. Okay, simple dates performance. Uh, we also have a time-weighted dashboard and investment strategy comparison, which is available for non-SMSF as well as the SMSFs. Now, these dashboards, they can be shared with the client. If you want to give them access, you could give them a login. It's a matter of inviting them into your license. That way they can log in, they can view these investment dashboards. They can get that holistic portfolio view, um, seeing all of their investments. You know, this is important for clients that maybe they've got more than one broker. Maybe they've got a traditional broker and a crypto broker. Uh, maybe they've got off-market investments, properties, and they want to see everything in one platform rather than just what's available perhaps in the usual ComSec login. For the accountants as well, we also have the detailed CGT realised and unrealised reports available in the reports section. Now, when providing clients access, you can choose the level of access they have. So you can choose what they can and can't see, what screens they can see, what they can and can't do. So you do have full control over that. Next slide. Thanks, Matt. And just recently, we added a portfolio progress report. This was based off feedback from clients, uh, something that you usually find in a financial planning software. Uh, so this one will show you the performance of the portfolio over time with a maximum of 50 periods. Um, so you can set this up to generate either as each bar being monthly, 
quarterly or annually. And like we said, for a maximum of 50, you could do it for less. You could do it, say, 24 periods if you wanted to do monthly over the last two years, uh, and it will generate. And this report was created by Simple Invest 360 team, but is available for all entities, so including SMSFs. Um, we also have engaged by BGL. Not everyone knows that BGL has an app. And from day one, you can provide access to this app for your clients. You can provide them access just to the web app if you want, or you can give them access also to this phone app, which they can download on their, their phone, the mobile app. Uh, and there's no extra charge for this. This is already included in your software costs, access to the mobile app. Of course, being fully cloud-based solution, you're not paying per users. So you can give access to as many people as you like. What I might do now, I just wanted to give you a quick look at the app. Let's have a look. Just while you're doing that. Yeah, it's certainly the data the accountant sees is exactly the same data the client sees. So there's no difference. There's no reconciliation points. Um, it's all the same data. That's right, yeah. So when the client logs into the app on their phone, they'll get this dashboard where it gives them a view of the investments. They can do it over a longer period of time. Uh, and they can also benchmark it to ASX. Scroll down, they'll be able to see a total value. And they will also have, I think I just need to, they will also have a view of the uh, investment broken down as well. And if I jump over to investments, they'll be able to see a rate of return. This one's on a weekly basis and the breakdown by types of investments. And if I click on the performance there as well, so you can see that they've got uh, quite a lot of options there. I'll be able to view the different kind of investments that they have. And then the final piece here is the client query. So if you're getting any transactions coming through that you're not sure of, or perhaps you need a little bit more of information, perhaps you need a document attached to it, you can send it to query. The client will receive this in their app. It's just a matter of them then clicking on it. They can say, okay, I remember what that is. I sold an investment. They can type in some notes here. They can attach a document uh, and then upload that and submit it and you will receive a notification uh, back in the software. So you can see it's another great way for you to be able to engage with your clients. If you just wanna jump back into the presentation, Matt. And so as Brett says, trying out Simple Invest 360 is very low risk due to the speed at which you can get set up. Uh, BGO will assist. We do have the client success team that will help you with onboarding. Uh, and as Brett says, you know, just give it a go. Uh, you've still got another almost week to try it out for free. You've had access to that since so about mid-June, so that will be coming to an end, that free period there. But you've still got some time to get some data in there. As Matt's showing you today, it's very quick to get set up, very quick to upload data. And it's just a matter of trying it out. I'm sure you'll love it like all of our clients who tried so far do. Okay, thanks, Andrew. This um, is just part of the setup. Uh, we find we know it's challenging at the moment for accountants to set up and get CGT history out of other solutions. So one of the uh, very uh, innovative developers at BGL um, came up with this solution, had the same problem, has his own uh, data stored elsewhere and was able to grab this data from a physical PDF report. Okay, in this case, we're grabbing the data from a competitor solution. I'll just play you this. It's basically scanning a PDF. It could just be a photo, um, an image. Um, it could also be our simple ledger database that's got a lot. Our simple ledger is desktop uh, based, our very old ledger solution. You might have data in it. Um, you can grab the report out of that and I'll show you what it can do. So here I've got four pages of CGT unrealized data. I browse for that file, in this case it's a PDF, it could be an image. 
I then click create. And this is where the magic happens. Effectively, it starts reading that report and creating all the charts of accounts. Goes right down to parcel level, adds all the investments, adds all the cost bases, allows you to put in any adjustments that you may want to. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's 100% accurate, but it can generally get up to about 98% of your workload done from four main types of sources of reports. I don't mention competitors' names, but you may recognize some of them uh, by the, the look or the ugliness of the reports. And yeah, uh, <laughs> you may uh, basically now get that data into the system a lot quicker. Uh, Andrew and his team uh, just also took over. We might, we might leave that to the question and answers, but also if you don't have a report, you can manually use this screen as well to put in history. It allows you to put in distribution, uh, any tax deferred amounts um, from prior distributions as well to get really that data in a lot quicker than was previously possible. And we know that's one of the big barriers to entry. So that's why we're focused on getting that data, making it quicker to get data in. I'll just, so that's what we call our CGT, again, using machine learning. Uh, we're really the only ones using that in the space. And to me, it's a no brainer, $100 uh, per entity per annum. Okay, so that's for our simple invest base solution. Everything we've shown you here today, including work papers, including the machine learning. Uh, Andrew showed you some of the automatic revaluations, investment reports. I did see a question, do we support international pricing? Yes, we support international, uh, UK, US, NASDAQ, all the major exchanges. Um, and then the only add-on, so this is where you have to make the choice. Um, 100 bucks plus GST. And then if you can get data electronically, why wouldn't you add the $40 onto that? Uh, for funds that have a bank account. Now, some individuals that you've just got a, an investment portfolio, maybe you don't want to load the bank feed, so you don't have to pay for it. Because sometimes that muddles it up. You don't want to see all the personal uh, Visa card statements or MasterCard come through. You know, you just want to get the investment. So in that case, you might just load a limited CSV file of some of the cash share purchases and just, you know, offset it as a journal. So it's optional on the right there. And then the share data pack. So the share data pack is what Andrew was talking about, where you can basically connect to all the broker feeds and the registry feeds. That is additional $40. So for something that's got a lot of real estate in it, or you know, some NFTs are very topical at the moment, you're not going to really want a share data pack for something like that, uh, or some property. Um, or you, know, you may just have some unusual investments that are quite CGT heavy, but they're not broker. So you don't have to pay for that $40. So if you have a real complex family fund that's got a bit of everything, uh, crypto, you know, fully diversified in shares overseas, Australian, ETFs, property, then you would go the full bag. You'd go the $180, $100 base, $40 for the feed, and $40 for the share pack. The question I get asked next, what about if I've got five feeds, Matt? You know, everyone's got their separate bank account in my trust. They don't trust each other. <laughs> uh, well, then you still only pay $40. You don't pay $40 per bank account. It's $40 per entity, $40 per trust, $40 per company. Andrew, anything there on the pricing? No, that is the pricing uh, minimum blocks of five, then you can upgrade in singles. That's for the professional edition. And we also have a Simple Invest 360 investor edition, which is for perhaps a, a self-directed investor, um, similar to our Simple Fund 360 trustee, where they are paying 220 per year for a trust or a company or an individual. So they can purchase that separately. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's a good point, Andrew. Uh, the investor edition, you can give clients access to this and they can, they can do some of the, the work 
um, just like they may do in some of their business accounts. It's generally pretty easy to software to use. And the best thing Andrew pointed out was you can control exactly what screens they've got access to. So I showed you the smart matching screen where all they could do is basically do some basic matching with the machine, learning, helping them do some matching. They may get it wrong, but you can just give them access to that screen and the investment screen only. Cut them out of the reports, cut them out of any other screen that you'd wish to. So you've got a lot of flexibility when it comes to that sort of client investor relationship. Um, you're in control of what they see in the software. And we should just point out, so with that pricing, a simple invest, the entities are separate to simple fund. So you would need minimum of five purchased entities on simple invest with a minimum of five on simple fund 360 if you're running both SMSF and non-SMSF. But the, the data packs, so the bank data pack, the share data pack, you can share those between SMSFs and non-SMSFs. Yeah, so rather than have those wasted, you can use those for some uh, trusts that you weren't using for your SMSF. So what next, Andrew? Get started. Start adding some entities, try it out. Tell us what you love. Tell us what you want us to, uh, to improve on. That's what really driving the development of the product is users, real users, you know, accountants, financial planners, their end users, their clients using the software, giving us feedback, and it's just helping us to know the direction where we need to go with it. Uh, we just got a question there. We'll, we'll go into a bit of question and answer. Um, I think we've got a little bit of time left up our sleeve. Certainly those that uh, do need to get going and don't want to hang around for questions have seen enough and are ready to purchase, <laughs> then uh, you know, certainly reach out uh, to BGL and we've got a dedicated account management team. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time. For those that need to head off, jump onto the next appointment, whatever the next webinar is, we thank you very much.